Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first episode of Noved Notes. I'm your host, Noved Player, here with a lovely, esteemed first guest of this podcast, uh, the lovely Gear Gabo, uh, one of my personal homies, um, amazing role player uh, in the VR chat community, uh, the official Loki, the best IMO, Drill B <laughs> in VR chat. Gear, welcome on to Noved Notes. How you doing? How you doing? Thank you for having me, darling. You definitely give me more credit than I deserve. That's for damn sure. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, I've role played in the past in a few communities on VRC. Uh, I was known for being Grillby for the longest time throughout all the Undertale community on VRC, uh, that kind of stuff. And that's all past. I'm gonna say that's all past. Uh, some people still consider me, such as yourself. But uh, I've well well long ago put down the titles for the most part uh but yeah thank you for having me on yeah of course of course um so let let's let's go into your like role play you know experience in vr chat you, you've been you've been known to role play in a bunch a bunch of communities from like warhammer to uh the royal guard which is an undernet type of uh role play community uh undertale for those that are not informed um you know, you have so much, I, my phone, my poor phone, I, you know, this is what happens when we start the pilot episode and I don't do proper, uh, muting of my telephone. Do not disturb. Do not disturb. We can always, <laughs> we can always start again if you want. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, we're okay. We're doing, we <laughs> do it, we do it, no, nah, we, we do it live. It's all right. We do it live. Do uh, it live, do it live. I but, got you. But yeah, no, so, uh, your VR chat role play experience, you know, I, I know you also role play outside of VR chat too, but. Um, let's go ahead and start with some of the VR chat role play experience. Uh, if you want to go into some of that and like what communities you've worked with and what, what was your experiences like? Yeah. Um, when it comes to VR chat role play, it's a very mixed bag. There's a lot of groups that get way too much into the structure of it. That's usually military role play stuff. Um, got a bit of that with the Royal Guard. I was in Warhammer and there's a lot of that there. God. Um, and there's places like the Yakuza, Kocho no Yakuza, I'll make sure to drop the name properly, because they're fantastic. I love them. I'm so sorry I haven't been there. I love you guys. I just, man, I've been dying. But uh, you know what? It, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do want to drop the names of the communities that I have been a part of for sure, for sure. I was in the Royal Guard, as you said, with Undernet. If you want to check them out, they, at least they were fun for me, you know, starting off that kind of stuff. I've heard that they've done some good things, so you may want to go check them out. Uh, you know, whatever. My my experiences with that, I'm going to stay out of any negatives with a lot of the stuff I talk about today, because there's no point in that. I could drone on all I want about shit, but uh, I'd rather just say the nice parts, share some of the good memories. Royal Guard mm. in particular... It was a lot of fun early on. I didn't plan to get to be a higher up. I eventually became the first of the high lieutenants. And I was the first, like, I was high rank the whole time I was there until I left. We left on not not great terms, but that's whatever. While I was there, though, there was plenty of good times to be had. It was, you start off as a sentry kind of thing. Then after you interact a bit, you go through a bit of training. Uh, well, you start as a trainee, you go to sentry pretty quick if they're promoting people properly. But as a sentry, you go out on patrols, that kind of stuff. You interact with people in the Undertale community. You're supposed to just kind of have fun with it. Uh, that's the that's what I always pushed, was just have fun with it. We can do more strict stuff if you're looking for more strict role play where you actually act as proper guards. But for the most part, people just want hijinks, to have fun. That's the point of being a sentry. You can be mm -hmm. a private, which means you've been there longer, you're more trusted, you can help kind of lead things, that kind of stuff. It's just good, you know? Uh, usually a little bit more pressure is put on you. And then you have your higher ranks, such as, you know, lieutenants, lieutenant junior. Uh, I'm trying to remember we had corporal, I'm pretty sure, which was kind of a unit leader. There'd also be squads, that military structure. But they didn't do any of the actual combat stuff. Um, I do want to make a specific shout out to Deimos Faith. Uh, if any of you know him, absolutely wonderful lad. I love that man. He was my successor. He's the only person I trust to take over my position, to take over and lead the guard well. I know that he takes care of people, and he, you know, he does some things better than I ever could, and that's the whole point of training someone. Of course, um, of course. 
but yeah, the Royal Guard experience was silly. I started just as a sentry, went up to private at an, a decent speed, never bothered trying to go for anything higher. I was a very quiet character for the most part, rock golem kind of thing. I still have my old Avi for it uh, because Passy Frisk made it for me. Bless her soul. She's absolutely, absolute sweetheart. Um, but it was really, we'd go to events for undernet related stuff. We'd have specific Royal Guard events on occasion, such as trainings or certain patrols and that kind of thing. And it was a lot of fun once when, when we had a lot of active members of the community actually coming out and that. It went stale after a while. A lot of people just kind of were dying off. And because of the administrative process, and this is a big fault for a lot of groups that do role, uh, military structures is that it is a thing of processing you need basically bookkeepers and nobody wants to do that mm. it's annoying it's hard it's tedious so that throttled a lot with a bit of mixed management but that's whatever uh i did my best while i could you know um that's all i can really say on that i remember going to like grillby's for example and uh, while there was some bartenders on shift, so, well, bartender and some employees, some of the staff, mm -hmm. uh, we went in there. It was our squad of about five people. And we went in and we just started role playing with each other, role playing with them. And the, the best part is pretty much every time you go to La Flambeau, when uh, you've got employees there, there's always people looking to raid, you know, harass the employees, yada, yada. And there's a lot of people that try to, like, act with violence but it's vr you know you just whatever <laughs> they don't care they they want to be annoying right i've managed to on several occasions including that one convince them to raid somewhere else literally just talk to them they're like man they ain't got nothing they're too busy cleaning all day people keep running out with the tab you might want to go back upstairs go two buildings over to the store <laughs> and then they flood back out to the Snowden portal and they go and they start harassing snow. I'm like, dang, <laughs> we have diplomacy at its finest. And you do right. it all in character. Mm -hmm. Of course. No, it's, I... it's all silly stuff. Yeah, no, it definitely sounds like an experience. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really crazy what different types of role play communities there are out in VR chat. Um, which is one of the main things I actually, you know, want to showcase on this podcast, um, you know, different types of communities, you know, of course, there's also like the asset avatar and experience creators, uh, world creators, stuff like that. But to get to know the actual, you know, communities, because VR chat is a, it's a social platform, you know, that solely derives itself on the community and the sub communities that are inside of this giant VR chat community. Um, you know, and I know, I know you don't do it as much, but you know, have you ever considered coming back to like VR chat role play? I know you mentioned coach no Yakuza, um, but I know you've been absent due to some life instances, uh, as life happens, as we all know. Um, but, you know, do you think you'll ever come back to the like VR chat role play community? I I really hope that I can go back to the Yakuza at some point sooner rather than later. Uh, one of the big things for me is just uh, I need to get my avatar in order. That was a thing since before that I had to take my break. That causes me some stress just because I don't want to harass people. And at the same time, I can't get myself to edit the avatar properly, so I'm my I'm my own worst enemy here. Um, mm. <laughs> but uh, that mixed with that that discourages me from trying to interact at all because I feel like I should not interact until I get my avatar done. Uh, that's they aren't at all doing that to me. I'm doing that to myself. I'm going to make that very clear. Coach no Yakuza sweethearts i love them and they're very good at dealing if any kind of issues arrive i had an issue at one point and they're very quick to help me with it you know make sure everything was sorted and did it in a fairly friendly manner you know all that it's they definitely take care of their members very very well and try to be very respectful to other people in other communities that they might interact with um I do hope that I can go back. I just, I know getting my avatar done is going to be a big thing in my way for myself. And once I get over that, I might be able to start easing myself back in. It's, 
the other life issues I'm I'm dealing with. I'm getting there, but yeah, of course, um, life happens. But like, yeah, it's Yakuza was so. Oh my god, because I'm known for my harpies. I'm known for birds, so my character is a bird with kimono, you know, yada yada, all that, and. The one moment that I think exemplifies Kocho and how nice the group is, in a way, and this is so silly, because I've never had this happen to me, all right? So, I'm trying to remember, I'm sorry if I get the terms wrong, I'm not enough of a weeb to remember things, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have an Aniki, I think, is the term, like, older brother, and they do that when you are, you know, kind of in training there you are very very new you are assigned a mentor an aniki or whatever the equivalent is for like an older sister i guess um but uh i got an older brother i think or is it older whatever i have an older sibling aniki is just the name i was term i was given which is silver and you know i've been kind of hesitant about it my character is very pacifistic despite the fact that there's a lot of combat in there. So it's a really kind of a wrench in the machine kind of situation. Um, so I haven't been attending too many things other than like more op- social events, yada, yada. And there was one time that they were hosting a combat event and I just, uh, I didn't even realize it was happening to be honest. And I saw my Anakis on and I wanted to spend more time with my Anaki, So I asked them for an invite and I came in and I realized, oh, there's somebody guarding the entrance of the world they usually use, you know? I'm like, okay, so they're role-playing then. So I quickly just on the fly kind of, I always join in my harpy, but I just got in character on the spot kind of thing. And went in, and I just thought maybe it was a chill-out thing. I don't, I didn't look at the Discord, because I'm like, okay, it should be fine. And I go in, and I see a group of people, including my Anarchy, walk by me, and I just kind of go, okay that's where that's going so i was i didn't think much of it i went to the bar where some people were hanging out and talked with people a little bit mostly i just observe and take it in i'm trying to get used to it and see how they do things and then i found out that like they were all rallying because there's going to be a combat event kind of thing uh this event was hosted by radavast i think the name is um and so I'm like, okay, they're doing a combat thing. They're doing kind of the prep right now, setting the rules in place, that kind of stuff. Because for each host, they can change how the event goes to a degree. Uh, there's certain hard limits, of course. But, uh, you know, they're setting it up. And so I went just to listen in, and then I was going to kind of go hide in the HQ kind of thing. Go go hide, take cover, whatever. And that would allow me to either go into a spectator, like an invisible avatar, or leave the instance if I needed to, because I would have been, you know, dealt with. Mm-hmm. Mid, mid-explanation of the event, they say, and remember, you're not safe at any time. Go. And we're like, what? <laughs> and I turn around and see seven fuckers running at us. Sorry for the language. I have. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> seven of them running at us. Seven of them are at us, and it is immediately into the event. Nobody has their equipment, because you have to actually make sure you come in with your equipment in that. Yada, mm-hmm. yada. So nobody has their equipment in that, and they're all fighting, like, hand-to-hand in that. So me and the one designated medic there run into the HQ to go grab equipment, you know? So we have to go to the... To the, uh... Uh to the armory and we're grabbing equipment, medical supplies, and we ferry medical supplies to the medical center. That's more in town there to use as an outpost. And I'm helping carry loads of weapons. So everyone can get armored up properly. And I wasn't planning on it being there at all for this. I got thrown right in by my anarchy without a single word. They walked by me and went. (laughs) And so I then got roped into, apparently, the most chaotic combat event that they had ever had to date. And I helped make, like, call-outs and stuff, like, because I'm non-combatant, my character. But in a panic, I'll also say, oh, this person slipped into there, this person over there, yada yada, you know, make call-outs for other people who do combat. Mm -hmm. And I helped bandage people in my first ever 
combat oriented event i had to learn how to use items how to carry people that are wounded everything all on the fly and their most chaotic event to date fair enough wow that's, <laughs> that's my wild. Anarchy comes up to and my anarchy comes up to me after i didn't even think about the people that left they just changed avies and came back in but i was so focused on the role play aspect and the chaos of the situation that i didn't even think who the people were in the avatars attacking us my brain actually went unga bunga and i full immersed myself <laughs> No, that's cool though. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a cool thing to for RP to be fully immersed like that. <laughs> oh god, it's the first time I've actually had it in VR uh, where I've gotten that immersed. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a really cool experience though. You know, like it's like oh, yeah. it sounds super cool. Like I I really hope like for those that are listening, like this this type of stuff inspires you to get into the roleplay communities because like especially Coach and Oyakuza because they are very phenomenal oh, yeah. in how they host events. Um, I experienced it. Uh, I exp experienced it. Hello. Uh, I experienced many different, you know, events of theirs um, back in the day. And, you know, they're th they do amazing events. Um, if you ever get a chance, um, you know, please check out their stuff. They, they, they do amazing stuff. But yeah, no, uh, to be fully immersed like that, it, you know, it, it, it brings a whole new meaning to, you know, metaverse. Um, you know, because mm -hmm. I, one of my, one of my big things is I always say, you know, metaverse is a lot closer to the reality than what people believe it to be. Um, because you know, there, and this is, this could be a whole separate episode realistically, because there's so many things that, that, you know, veteran and trust, you know, veteran VR players know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. Um, but it's, there's so much that can make you feel fully immersed uh, whether it's like feel pain that you feel like in game or, you know, like phantom pain, phantom touch, like all that stuff, you know, it, it, it especially in RP communities, like if you're completely immersed, you know, you feel those things, you know, it's not just, it's not just a game because you are experiencing it live, which is by default, you know, a lot better than, at least in my opinion, better than, you know, than like let's say gta 5 role play you know you get more immersion in the it, fact so i think one thing to talk about is the difference between those people that phantom sense and people who are better at immersing themselves into role play think of it as a difference of okay <sighs> How can I even explain? Because people with phantom sense, you know, it's the whole ow, chi, ui, that kind of stuff, yada, yada, or pats and that. I could do a little bit with phantom sense. Very little. When you immerse yourself in a character, there's a difference. It's not even a thing of that you're feeling a pain or anything. It is a thing of that you are responding to pain that you don't feel at all. It is a thing of you basically become a method actor once you are that immersed. And that's the big difference. A lot of people with the phantom sense, and despite personal opinions, which I have a contrary opinion, hello, yes. Um, <laughs> phantom sense is a lot more of a passive, uh, really, you really do focus on it a lot. You have to focus on phantom sense, whether people say how passive it is or not. Really with it, it is a very active effort to basically convince yourself that you're feeling something feeling hurt something like that you're a method actor in a different way mm. i'm not going to speak my opinions on it too much because i can sour people and i don't want to don't want to do that to no one it's my opinions are my opinions on it when it comes to the role play stuff i find it extremely different because i've experienced fan like the phantom sense stuff and it is night and day difference because when you are acting into it and playing the part, instead of just feeling something you're thinking that you should instinctually feel, it is, it's a lot more rewarding. It's a lot more rewarding. Because you've got, you're, you're doing your character well, you're feeling actually a part of something, where Phantom Sense is a lot more random feeling. It's a lot more, there's there's nothing really weighing on it. Where at the role play, you've got the situation at hand. If you're in combat communities, I do not suggest joining combat communities if you have heavy phantom sense. Uh, some people would argue that, but I would say it just because 
a lot of the people that I meet that do have like the heavy phantom pain in specific just don't have a good time with it or they will really interrupt the flow of an event because they will break character just to feel said pain, right? That's why I don't suggest if you have heavy phantom pain that you do it. Sure. Uh, some phantom sense is good, but uh, phantom pain, probably not. Otherwise, like, it's it's really just you're so focused on being in the moment and in the character that you just get lost to it. Like, mm. it's so much fun. It's so much fun. No, yeah, no. It's definitely it, it's, it's definitely one of those experiences that you just got to experience for yourself, you know, because there's there's so many, like you said, military sim, you know, there's also like uh, fandom related ones, um, you know, like Undernet and, you know, all the Undertale ones and uh, like RWBY, uh, mm -hmm. Ruby, you know, I, I'm, I'm uncultured. Sorry for people watching. Um, <laughs> Don't worry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's, you know, well, let's go to military sims. There's like uh like army ones there's just basic military ones there's police there's uh yakuza there's there's so many different types of roleplay communities out there um so really i mean there's anything you know there mm -hmm. if if you're looking for a particular community probably a decent 80 percent chance there's already a community for it um oh yeah um big ones that i know that are out there too are half-life and scp there's some big ones for that too. yeah 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 yeah. no there's some there's some there's a lot of those too um yeah, yeah a lot man. of those usually don't do the military side as much like they'll do the military side i know the the half-life one does if you're they do a lot of the military stuff from what i've seen i've always been kind of delved into military-esque stuff combat-esque stuff so that's more of what i'm gonna see but from what I saw, too, the 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 Half Life or SCP is more likely to also do kind of more relaxed. They're not super military heavy. Some of them are. There's a good few that are probably. But I've also seen some of the ones where they'll sometimes do it, sometimes not. If you want one that is not combat involved, um, there is. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna pull up the name just so I can make sure I can get it right. Uh, <laughs> I found out about them because of the Yakuza, but it's Togare Termini. So T-O-G-A-R-E, T-E-R-M-I-N-I, -E Togare Termini. And they are just a social role play. They have this multi-dimensional, basically train station where anyone from anywhere can interact kind of thing. And they do that weekly. Uh, Yakuza does stuff very, very, very frequently. I know Togare, I get a couple pings a week at least. Uh, from there and they're just completely relaxed they have a bookstore they have a weapons shop they have all this and that so you can make your own stories with like members of togare specifically or just other floaters in the area other drifters mm. yeah no that's super cool mm -hmm. definitely definitely interested in that um so i it, like kind of just the because while we do focus on vr chat we also like to focus on, you know, the the guests themselves and, you know, other ventures they do. Because um, I know you said you also did role play like outside of VR chat. Um, mm -hmm. what, like, what are some what are some good examples of like role play outside of VR chat? Like, or I guess what would you what would you compare um, like the goods, maybe the not so goods between like VR chat role play and non VR chat role play? VR chat role play, uh, definitely technology boundary. Mm. Um, that especially for the military ones. I know with Warhammer, when I was in Warhammer, the biggest issue was desyncing too many players in a lobby, yada yada, particle effects, right? So people would be lagging, so on and so forth. And it really just it can't really make you focus on a situation because somebody or another is going to complain. Oh, it's desynced. Oh, it's lagging too much. Oh, this. Oh, that. That's the issue with some of the Milson stuff, where with external roleplay, like I've done through text, you know, text chats, I, some people find it cringe, but no matter where you go, it's cringe. I think Amino's cringe, so like, whatever. Uh, I did it on Facebook for a while, because that was the first social platform I was ever on, mm. uh, and the only reason I was ever on it was because my first girlfriend made me a facebook account and like forced me to use it and so Fair. yeah uh, <laughs> but uh with text-based role play 
you can it's really more of crafting a story than anything it's hard to act with more people you need more structure rules set in place that kind of stuff um but but for the most part it's usually just one-on-one stories where on vr chat with the role plays you can have a whole fucking slew of people all together at once and it's easy because you're all in person you can see each other's movements usually unless they're desktop but there's ways around that too um but yeah, the VR chat, the big benefit is the fact that you could do more people so much easier. It's like the difference between text-based D&D campaign or one where you actually have tabletop stuff, right? And models, and you're actually in person. You could do D&D over Discord, and that's whatever, and you can only do so much. But once, like you could do video calls, this and that. But once you have people in person in that, and you're all kind of interacting and seeing each other in that, it's a completely different experience. That's the same thing between, you know, my past role play and VR chat. VR chat can be more immersive with groups, where text, I find it is more immersive one on one because you can flesh out the story more. Mm. But it all comes down to your preference, too. Right, of course, of course. No, it, it, yeah, it definitely comes down to, you know, any of the players, you know, choice. It's all a matter of perspective and personal preference, really. Um, mm-hmm. Well, cool, man. That's 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 sick. You know, like that's it's really cool to get inside the mind of you know somebody who does like VR chat role play like that. You know, I, I I've done like very very minuscule like amounts of role play. Like I'm a part of communities uh, via affiliations and stuff, but I've you know, and I've done like uh, probably no more than a handful of events in total. Um, you know, that's why I'm a content creator, right? <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, though, it, it's cool to get into the minds of, you know, role players um, and just kind of experience what they experience, you know, in a sense, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's cool, um, which is why I, I I definitely wanted to get, you know, some role play communities involved with this podcast um, because every, you know, while some, some of the themes may be similar, a lot of the you know, the way they run things, the way events are handled, like they're all different, you know, even if they have similaristic, you know, themes, um, it's, it's just one of those things that you, you don't really understand a community until you experience it yourself, you know, cause un- unfortunately, mm-hmm. unfortunately with, uh, like a lot, a lot of stereotypes and I'm, I'm only saying this just to, you know, Unfortunately, a lot of stereotypes when it comes to VR chat players is, oh, you've experienced one, like, amuse military sim, uh, for example. Oh, you've done one mil sim community. You're going to, you've known them all. No, that is not the case. That is never the case, you know. And that that's that's why I appreciate the community so much is because even though they have similar themes, they have their own unique, you know, style They in everything that they do. Um don't mind me i'm just adjusting everything you know pilot episode right um (laughs) i do i do want to say if you have some of the similar experience like some of that same mindset where if you've experienced one you've experienced everything and it's not for you because it was too chaotic to this to that yada 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 that was me with warhammer and royal guard like i just kind of went okay this is how things are going to keep going i was in a few warhammer communities well, more so one that kind of changed a bunch of forms, and I interacted with other ones, but yeah, whatever semantics on that. But I was kind of in that mindset of, oh god, military sim stuff is always going to be like this, or combat-related roleplay is always going to be shit like this. And then I went to Kocho no Yakuza, and it flipped that that assumption I had on its head. If you are if you're stuck in that kind of mindset, give groups like Kocho no Yakuza a try. They're, it's hard to find. You're going to take a few shots, maybe jump different communities completely, entire genres, everything. I'd suggest Kocho no Yakuza personally, because that is my experience. But uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of others for every range of roleplay where maybe you've just been getting bad pulls, and you just need to find that right one. You know? So, just keep kind of looking. If you want to give Kocho no Yakuza a try, do so they have like the 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 vr chat group they have a discord they're not hard to find um so i i want to send love their way if you're interested go say hi to them i'm sure they would love to see you and uh i'll also add on to this uh because i know uh i i do have some friends in coach and uh 
I won't name drop because I don't know if they want me to name drop. But if you guys are interested in being on the podcast, you guys are more than welcome. You guys have my Discord and Twitter. Hit me up. Um, I'll put their links in the description. Um, Coach of No Yakuza. So it, make sure to check down below in the description. Um, unless you're on TikTok, just go over to the YouTube side and uh, check it out on there as well. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's definitely, you know, it's it's one of those things that and it's an unfortunate that that's the stereotype that, you know, role play communities get because it's 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 never the case. You know, it it's unfortunate, but that's just how it is, you know. You just got to convince these people otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, no, it's um one of the other things, you know, as I'm digging through your whole portfolio here, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you also, uh, you know, and you also do, you you are the head runner of the Gremlin Den as well. Um, I, I don't know if you want to talk Gremlin a little bit more Den about is... that. Gremlin Den is, you know, my silly little place, little community. Um, it was founded by, you know, myself, Gergabo, and my best friend, uh, Storyteller. Um, it's been going through some turbulence lately because of some real life stuff that's happened. I don't want to go over that here. It's not the place. No, no, time. that's okay. But, um, the place is supposed to be dedicated for the people that are there at this point. We wanted to grow a little community together and do fun things. We have a, like a Minecraft server that we play in sometimes. It's pretty dead now, but uh, stuff, you know, it's just stuff happens. Unfortunately, um, there's no yeah. drama. I'm just gonna say that. I'm just gonna say that no drama. That's that's not the issue at all. But um, we have like that Minecraft server that I pay for that I host that has some mods in it. Uh, I hope to post stories there once I actually get some stuff going. I've been working on something a little bit recently. Uh, and then we also do, we used, I used to stream more often and try to be on a schedule. This winter, things have been kind of thrown to the shitter because of this and this and this. Uh, so I haven't been able to stream really. I don't, I can't get myself the energy to. Usually it's I stream. We have my fantastic editor who we refer to as Pop. They changed their names a few times. Uh, but Pop, absolutely fantastic at what they do. They're a very sweet person. They can get misunderstood sometimes, but yeah, that's whatever. Um, <laughs> but we have stuff on the YouTube channel for Gremlin Den. Uh, if you guys want to see that kind of stuff, it's, we have some G mods, some Left 4 Dead, so on and so forth. I haven't uploaded in quite a while because once again, life gets in the way. And, of uh, like it was work life that dragged me down too much. And then once winter hit, things just kind of happened. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll have some stuff up there again soon enough. Uh, you can feel free to join in, say hi. Uh, hopefully I'll have some stuff written up and able to be shown off soon. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> I could be hopeful, but actions speak louder than words. But, uh, yeah, no, I hope I can grow that one day and, you know, make it the community that we wished it could be. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, and with, with most communities, a, a lot of life stuff happens and, you know, and content creation, like, you, you know, life, life always comes first, you know, no, no, mm. no viewer or watcher is going to be upset if, you know, some life instances has happened, you got to take a break, you know, the, the main thing about that, and this is just what I've experienced is communication, you got to communicate to people, you know, like, don't don't ghost anyone you know what i'm saying like it's you, you gotta you gotta at least be somewhat forward about it even if it's hard you know mm-hmm. it, it, it's definitely it, that's just from personal experience um yeah i'm definitely terrible for that kind of stuff i'm i'm <laughs> i'm i'm the example i'm i'm the example <laughs> <laughs> but you it, know. it really it it leads to st- being stagnant and then you just burn yourself out because you have stuff you want to do that you've neglected and then since you've neglected it you feel bad about it and then you can't do it and then you keep not doing it and then you feel bad because you're not doing it and 
That's some cope mindset there. I I die. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um. So yeah. So you do a bunch of role play stuff. You know, on and off VR chat. Um. And you also have you know your small community. You know of friends that play games and stuff. Um. But let's go into let's go into um one of the other things you do and kind of go into more specifics. Um. Because you used to bartend. You know a lot in VR too. Um, you know, with a, if I remember correctly, with a few communities, you know, as well as Grillby as well. Um, you know, mm-hmm. so what, what is it like being a VR bartender? Like what, 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 what are some, what are some good and bad, maybe not so good things about being a VR chat bartender? I'm not the most experienced when it comes to that. I'm not going to say that ever at all. Um, if anyone's looking for the bar experience, of course, the Midnight Club is the place to go. They're the most developed place on VR chat at the moment for bartending, but you don't need the fancy systems to be a bartender. You can do it anywhere that has a bar. Um, with bartending, I find the most fun experiences is when you are up late on a Friday night, Saturday night, and you get those people who hop on that have already been drinking and they want to go to a bar world as well to wind down or just to get going in that. And they like to take shots along with their drinks. Uh, I know there's a few times where I've actually moderated some people and they're like, okay, every time you give me something, I'm going to drink. I'm like, okay, I'll make sure moderate you. I'll, I'll keep an eye on your drinks then and keep an eye on how you're doing. It really is a thing of interacting with the people, having little conversations, and mostly just listening into everyone. It's not like you're snooping on a conversation. They're having it at the bar right in front of you. Right. Um, and, you know, if there's more private conversations that shouldn't be happening, as a proper bartender of an instance, so like Midnight Club, there's one, one bartender usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patreon screws with that some. But overall, with the groups and that, you have your specified bartenders. And if something's going on, uh, you know, do your best to encourage them to leave. If you're in a like a group public instance kind of thing, so it's group instance and you have moderation abilities, you remove problem people. But uh, for the most part, I very rarely see that. It's usually just a lot of really giggly people fun people maybe some people that are having a bit of a rough day and unwinding and you get to just talk with them they'll tell you some of their troubles and you just kind of give them drinks keep an eye on them make them feel welcome it's another role play aspect really you except it's a lot more laid back you just you're the bartender that's it you're there to help people by just giving them that atmosphere I say it's very rewarding. Uh, I don't do it super often, but when I do it, it's nice. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So we've gone over Milsim. We've gone over bartending. We've gone over some of the other, you know, VR role play stuff. You know, what, what is, uh, I guess what is like the next or what, what is an ideal, how do I phrase this? What is the like, if you had to choose a topic of role play that hasn't been seen in VR chat, what would you want to see? I know that's a that's a thinker question. Topic of role play. No, th- it's a good one though. There is some that have been done, but I don't see them stick very often. I remember one that I saw where it was oh, it's like a game show kind of thing. But uh, it's a murder mystery. Mm, okay. So think of Danganronpa, I think is the name. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. There's yeah. been worlds in VR chat where it is that. They have the people who are basically like the monitors of the whole thing. They have camera systems in place. And basically you go in, you have a trait. Because in Danganronpa, everyone had like a specific trait. I remember my bestie telling me one time when they were watching one, somebody was a photographer, right? And so as they're going through it, And people have to, usually you want to work with the skill that you're given in that, you know, be your character with that skill, because that makes it fun. That's the point of role play. You can min-max, whatever. You could be a god sweat. But if you make it more interesting, that's what makes role playing more rewarding. If Mm. you actually play the part, if you have faults, if you can fail, and be creative. Person got photographer. And what they... What they realize is, well, photographer doesn't mean much. Until you realize, you can set a camera down. 
And what they did was they set their camera down and caught a murder in the act. Oh, nice. Which had never been done up to that point. They managed to hide it in like a potted plant kind of thing in a room and caught a murder on camera that they could then use. If you are not a photographer, if you don't have the excuse, they would say no. But they're a photographer. That's a big difference. And that was, it's just interesting things like that, working with your roles. Those kind of role plays are not as prevalent these days, I find. Groups like Kocho do stuff kind of like you set up your event, yada, yada. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do. I'm sure it's done more than I realize. I'm not going to say I have a wide knowledge on the role play community. I'm not going to say that at all. Because this could be something big that's out there. But I love the idea of that. Having that Danganronpa style, you know, kind of show where you have your spectators above the roof that stay quiet. They watch as things are happening. And it's all recorded stuff. And it's just very methodical, very fun. Uh, I would love to see some of that come back. If I want to talk about something that's never been really done, it's hard. There's so many creative sorts on here. Um... Something I I know people do, which is like, you know, creating movie, VR movies and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. There's one that I know that I could not come, like, manage to get the resources or the structure together for by myself. Uh, but looking at the worlds that are, uh, oh, God, I'm trying to remember the names of the mo- exact Organism, organism. Yeah, yeah. So you've got organism and the epilogue worlds. Having somebody craft their own story that goes on almost this fourth wall breaking adventure kind of thing. Not fourth wall as in like Deadpool high camera. Uh, maybe like a couple <laughs> moments like that if it fits your story. But craft a story that travels through the world or through certain areas of the world. I would love to see those bent architectures used for a creative purpose like that. I know they have their own story. The worlds have their own story in their own direction. But imagine a whole thing, like, one of the examples we had was that uh, there's desks all over in the worlds, and when I was playing this out with my bestie, because we were going to do this together, um, those desks that are scattered through the worlds, we're going to have the same repeating model that was going to be voiced by the same person everywhere you look, and that was going to be kind of a a niche within the world, just something to look at, right? But there's also going to be we're going to make another version of the same avatar that is a little more worn that you uh, occasionally the protagonist, you know, the person you're following would find very off the beaten path in weird spots. And they'd be going over their own troubles, seemingly unable to interact with the rest of the world. And Mm. so it'd be kind of a built in lower story of, well, now you got to think, why is there a difference between these? Is that person really that important? What do they do? That kind of thing. Make, make an open-ended mystery that people can really think about. There's plenty of worlds that do it. I know there's lots of ARG kind of stuff in VR chat, but I'm just talking very self-contained to this is the video, this is the production, and you have to pick things out of the video or maybe even do some of the external ARG. Either way, I feel like that would be cool if people started using worlds like that for their own role play, their own story building and getting other people in to act and just have this really convoluted and weird thing where even the people themselves may be unsure of what exactly their greater role is. We had mm. one person that there's another thing in the world, uh, one of those worlds where there's like the camera or the phone booth. It's in all of the worlds, I think actually, but you have the phone booths and some of them will teleport you uh, fun fact. But what it was going to be was we'd actually have one person having a heated conversation on one end. Then later in the video, they'd be in a whole other area and somebody else would be on the phone booth having the other end of the conversation. And you could stitch it together if you remember. Mm. And it would tell you something about what's going on in the world. It's just cool stuff like that. Leave more open-ended questions, open-ended stories where people can theory craft their own stuff. Mm. Yo, f- filmmakers of VR chat, you heard it here. You know, Metacosm, Portal Media, Studio Pedros. <laughs> I know there's a bunch more I'm just forgetting at the moment. That'd be a good idea. No, I, I definitely, you know, 
there's there's so many you know and a, a lot of the vr filmmakers you know they don't get um they don't get it you know the, okay i'm gonna i'm gonna word this really wrong um the average vr chat player <laughs> the average vr chat player does not know about vr films and vr movie short films um yep. I, I, I saved Everyone it. I saved the, it, chat. The YouTube world spot. Yeah, they'll, they'll know about the movie world. Well, the old movie world, because, you know, as they should have been taken down. I'm hot take. They should have been taken down a long time ago. Sorry, players. You know, it, <laughs> it was bound to happen. Um, but no, what people don't, you know, and if you go to worlds like, you know, uh, Virtual Film Institute or VFI, um, that's one of my favorite uh video worlds because it actually showcases uh all the film not all but a lot of the films that are in vr chat you know whether it be like you know the hbo max special um or you know ones that are actually made by the community um one of my <laughs> one of my personal favorites um well i'll give two so one of my one of my personal favorites that inspired me to do um like body acting for films uh was portal media's uh if life was a fever dream um an amazing mm -hmm. amazing film um and of course there's there's so many different types of genres you know when it comes to movies um you know and short films uh the second one um i actually had watched recently uh i'm, I'm gonna butcher the name and i'm so sorry because it, it, it just came to my head and i lost it immediately um shoot i want to say it's like virtual bodies I, I i'm gonna get grilled in the comment section if i if i you know virtual flub this up bodies. that sounds that sounds about right um there was but there was, it was I a, remember there was an actual movie just called warm bodies so yeah no there was a it was a it was kind of like a documentary style um of this person's like experience with the um like 18 plus side of vr chat um, and it actually goes like, not only, you know, and it goes through like their whole like experience and like their traumatic experiences and stuff. Um, and it goes like not only in VR, but also goes into like IRL related things too. Um, amazing movie. And if I butchered the name, I comments, I'm allowing you to roast me cause this is the pilot episode. Sorry. I'll do my research better. I, pro <laughs> I just, just this time, just, though. just this time. Um, no, but it, it was an amazing film and I actually watched it recently, um, with a few friends of mine. Um, definitely check out, uh, virtual film Institute. I think it's virtual film VFI. Um, I'm, I'm already poor on this research type of stuff. That's okay. It's the pilot episode. We'll get better as time goes on. Yeah, um, we'll get there. Yeah, they'll get there. They'll get there. Yeah, and when what's the what's the coolest thing about uh, VFI? It's it's not just a normal theater world, you know. It's not just a video player with a bunch of couches. No, this is an actual um, like IMAX cinema. Like it's it's an hmm. it's an actual theater. Like that's the type of theater that I would want to go to if I was watching movies in VR, you know. And and some of hmm. some of the old some of the old movie worlds, yeah, they had like a smaller cinema. No, I'm talking like, uh, well, this is the this is the world that they use for like big productions, like Rain Dance Immersive, um, you know, and a few other like big name like uh, film related events and stuff. So, yeah, no, it filmmakers, you heard the idea, get on it. Um, <laughs> hey, it's, and I do write stories myself, so if you if you want me to help out. My name's easy to search anywhere. Feel free. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, cool. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, you do. You've done so much for the VR Jet like community when, like, you know, helping communities out and you know, getting things started for communities and stuff. You know, what if you had a piece of advice to give, let's say, a new VR Chat player? obviously within reason <laughs> um if you had to give a, a piece of advice to one vr chat player when it comes to like start attending like wanting to participate in role play or maybe even a regular community what piece of advice would you give them um well if it comes to like role player getting more involved in the community it is really just 
go at your own pace, but realize that other people are people, and it's not just a product for you to take in. Um, you could start slow like me. I like to observe. I like to ease into things, that kind of stuff. Usually I get forced along at some point, but that's whatever. And other people like to delve right in and try to feel at home soon and that kind of stuff. Go at your pace, yes. Respect other people and the group itself, of course. Uh, but also just get a few situations under your belt, you know, get a few experiences. Realize that your first experience is probably not going to be the best one. And don't let yourself get too worn down by it. If you if you feel burnt out, that's different. But there's always more groups that do it in different ways. And though the groups that you've had interactions with may have not been the best, I guarantee you there's groups out there that will show you a difference. Kocho was my difference. Hell yeah, absolutely. All right, well... Is there any, I mean, is there anything else that you would like advice wise that you like, maybe not even community based, but just as like, if if you had to change like one thing, you know, about from when you started till now, would you? The experiences I have has led me to where I am. I would not have the people I have if it wasn't for what's happened. There's a lot of negative that you can focus on, a lot of bad that can happen in VRChat, and there's a lot of bad that will happen. Some people have had it worse than others. And all I can say is take the good with you. Take the good with you. Look for better experiences. You're going to have bad ones, but it, you can't find good experiences just by sitting there and molding. Don't let the game eat your life, mind you, but... Just look to have fun and realize that other people are people too. Mm. Very, very it's, wise words. I, w I wouldn't change my experience. There are bad things, but they make me learn and they, they get me to have the people I've had today. And I wouldn't change a single thing if it meant there's a chance of losing them. That's that's a fair point. No, that's that's a it's a very valid point. Um, I guess last question real quick, um, as v and I, and I always ask this just out of blatant curiosity, um, VR chat as a platform, if you had to change one thing, what would it be and why? Without the obvious ones, <laughs> sorry, no, I wouldn't even say obvious ones. I wouldn't say there's even some very obvious ones. Um, I think that right now they're in a spot that is about where I was hoping they'd be way back when. It sucks that it took that mass negative review spam from when EAC was released to make them make a bunch of changes that eventually work for better. Um, the virtual market is funny. I'm not going to trust it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's just a personal point. I, I think the fact that they put in proper NSFW filters, like 18 plus filters and that kind of stuff, and properly re-implemented them again, because they used to be a thing. It's always been, like, you could always tag them, but it didn't really do much or nothing. Um, now that it functions, I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like they should just kind of keep, I don't know if they could work on stability things or any way to incentivize people to you know, help things run smoother. I know they're really focusing quests, so that's probably something they're already trying to brainstorm, and they'd know better than I. I'm not going to pretend I'm all-knowing. Um, anything I could actually change? Um, I don't know. I feel, I feel it's all fine. I feel like support tickets are something that I feel do absolutely nothing most of the time. I don't feel, they don't, have a good enough way to filter through reports on children. That's a big thing. Like TOS, like, you know, below under the age. age of, yeah, under the age of 13. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's one issue is that I feel like I've never seen a result of that TOS being enforced. I've never seen that at all. Mm. And that's something that I think should be enforced more because I really, I think that people even of like, even teens have a rough time coping with this game, never mind 13 and below, you know? Like, it's already a game that messes with your senses. The people on here will screw you up. This is basically the 4chan of the virtual space. 
It's a know, very, like very, a very bold states. statement, this but is... yeah, no, it's it's pretty. It, it really is. It really go to any black cat. <laughs> that's that's your slash B. That's that, your slash that's B. Exactly, yeah, the, that's exactly what I was. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you sur- go in with people you know, take it slow, and realize that sometimes random people are here just to be assholes, and you can hit the block button. True, especially in black yeah, cats. No, like, the, you know, love spook, yeah. sp- spooky yeah. ghost boo. It's an amazing world. Don't get it twisted. You know, but oh, you you can't do anything about the fact that you're like the most traveled world. Like yeah. you're gonna get all the horrible people going through there. It's just a thing of a lot of people don't realize they could hit the block button. But at the same time, once again, just for that fact alone, they really need to make it seem like there's a way to actually enforce the TOS for age verification. Yeah, I mean, it's I would, I would argue they should put in a way to verify your age so that you could have access to any 18 plus content for sure. Oh yeah. 100%. That would, uh, that, that, should be <laughs> that, that would should, stop a lot of, uh, part of your VR chat account. Not to, not to bring up the dramas of VR chat, but that would stop a lot of people. If you know, you know, that's oh, yeah. all, oh, that's yeah. all I'm going to say. If you know, you know, long story short, if you know, you know, um, I know too many, I know too many, too, too many. Um, <sighs> But off of that, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, definitely, you know, I feel like it's something uh, when it comes to like support tickets, I feel like it's something they've always been trying to work on. Um, I think it comes down to not only, you know, uh, the influx of tickets on almost probably a daily basis, but also the fact of like, um, and this, this is just my interpretation. I could be completely off basis. VR chat. Don't come at me. I promise. Um, oh, hundred percent. We don't, hey, we don't know the inner workings. If you want to hire me, I'm down to work. I lost my job. I'm down to work. Uh, um, put him through the ringer. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah. I, I think it's also a matter of, you know, uh, staff V, you know, amount I, I think it just takes a while for them to get to like actual support tickets when it comes to that, you know, and it's, it's, there could be a lot of different variants, you know, on why that is. Um, but VR chat is hiring, you know, you never know. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, uh, there, there's all sorts of reasons. I think the, bi- the biggest thing is probably going to be, Definitely uh, make it so that you have to have proper ID and verification on a VR chat account to see any 18 plus content. You need to be verified. Just like Roblox has it for their fucking voice chat, all right? I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not too bad that you guys put it in place for literal like porn content in this game. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, no. I, I'm not I, wrong. It's... No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just. It's extra logistics. But yeah, I feel that that is a system that needs to be focused on. They put the tags in. I'm very happy they put the tags. They function. The issue is, is that somebody of any age can just click the box that says, "Okay, 18." Actually, I believe, and I could be mistaken. I believe uh, the sexually uh, was it sexually? Uh, what's the tag? Explicit. Yeah, I think if I remember correctly, it's sexually, explicit content, sexually yeah. explicit content actually does have an age gate on it. I could be wrong, but I'm I, 200 I know... years old on Facebook. <laughs> I'll say that's the other thing. Um, now, that, that, that's, now that's, that's the reason. Now Proper with ID verification. And sorry, Quest kids, I'm gonna come after you. Quest, you have to have your age, and it automatically goes into VR chat. So that is one, granted, um, and in ironic sense, um, you know, all the PC players always nag on, you know, oh, Quest players, yada, yada, yada. Quest players dominate this platform. There are more Quest players mm-hmm. on VR chat than there are PC players. And it's mostly because of affordability, mm-hmm. you know, realistically. I mean, yeah. hell, the, yeah. the Quest 2 yeah, and the always- Quest 3 are both cheaper than, like, the ACC Vive or the Index, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that's 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 oh, saying I a lot. I completely agree. The, you know. the issue is, is you can super easily lie on your age for your account. A hundred percent. 
photo verification, photo ID is what you need. You need actual ID. Yeah. I understand. You can falsify ID pretty easy. Okay. This stops a big majority. It's just like with the YouTube ad blocker situation where a lot of people didn't even think of ad blockers until YouTube started doing this whole ad blocker enforcement thing. And now everyone knows about ad blockers. Mm -hmm. So that that's the thing. You stop the common people kind of thing. Like the people who aren't going to jump through hoops for it, which is most people. Uh, I, most people aren't going to jump through the hoops to falsify ID. Right. They're just not going to bother. I don't do it for Roblox. Like, as simple as that. Yeah. Well, you're also 200 years old, according to Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh... First of all, how is that even allowed, the thing though? Is, is like... <laughs> but it's fucked up. It's fucked up. That's... <laughs> don't worry. I'm king, I'm king over in this. Yeah, in the fucking pyramid, bro. Anyways, but but yeah, <laughs> nah, that the, the, it's a it's a tricky situation. Um, but on I that, just say note, putting that extra step of photo verification is a good way to go. That's yeah, it. no, and I I absolutely agree. No, it's definitely definitely could be or at least something. I I I can attest to at least something. But we'll see where that goes. Um, but. We are out of time. Um, it is currently uh, an hour and a minute. Um, might be longer depending on how much editing I do. Um, but, Gear, thank you so much for being uh, the pilot episode uh, on this uh, Nova Notes podcast. Mm -hmm. um, before we do go, I want to allow you to you know, be able to promote anything you're doing, you know, anything, uh, any upcoming projects, um, or you know, pretty much anything that you want to promote. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that I would love to promote there, but I, it's not like I have so links and that kind of stuff I could, but that would fill up your description. Um, oh, it's already I being filled. Don't worry. There's a couple names <laughs> that I definitely, there's, there's a couple names that I'd want to put out there. I've already put coach no Yakuza out plenty of times. Um, I do want to say one of the people that definitely got me to where I am in VR chat at all, no matter the good nor the bad Yankee dev, he's no longer a huge part of VR chat. Uh, he does his own music and stuff. I would, I don't listen to it really, but I would suggest checking out Genki Tev. Show him some support. And on top of that, it's just really, I I'd want to list so many names like PJKT. I'd want to name, you know, even though I have my differences, I'd want to name Undernet because I want to throw love everyone's way. If good people could go to places and make places better, feel free. So that'd be Undernet, which has the Royal Guard. You have uh, Le Flambeau, which is where I used to be known for, is now labeled as Grillbees. Uh, so check them out. Royal, yeah, and I said Royal Guard in Undernet. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I think I think that's really all. If you want to see me, you want to contact me, my name's Gear Gabo. Pretty easy to find anywhere. Uh, there's the Gremlin Den on YouTube and for Discord. You should be able to find the Discord link through either my profile or on the YouTube. It should be in the description there, probably, unless I'm a hack. Uh, <laughs> and hopefully I can see you. If, you. if you want help with any writing projects or anything, I can try my best. It's always fun to try and get in with new projects and new communities and say hi. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, once again, thank you, Gear, for coming on the Nova Notes. Um, yeah, and viewers, listeners, thank you for listening to the pilot episode. Um, I'm excited to get this ball rolling, and you know, hopefully, have some amazing creators and community leaders and a bunch of people over on the pl on this platform. Um, so yeah, if you're interested uh, in listening to more Nova Notes, uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, comment any funny moments that you uh, had, um, or if you you know want to comment any questions to you know the guest, um, I feel like they might be interested in answering them, depending. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. thank you once again for you know listening in to Nova Notes, and uh, thanks for watching. I guess thanks for listening, depending on what platform you're on. But you have a great rest of your day, evening, night, whatever it is. And we'll see you next time on Nova Notes. Bye-bye.